spicy. It's so bougie. They will be mine at some point. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today, as the title indicates, we are going to be doing my $1,000 fantasy Sephora basket. I'm going to be sharing with you what I would purchase from Sephora right now, today, in this mindset. Um, with this video in mind if I had a thousand dollars to spend at Sephora. So if you're interested in seeing what I would pick up with a thousand dollars if I could from Sephora, then just keep on watching. All right, so in my basket I have 12 items that total $977 Canadian with tax. That would be a thousand dollars. So that's what I'm going off of. Um, I could add like another thing, but this is like my curated list. I've thought so much about this. So I have a few new releases from Patrick Ta in here, of course, because I've been lusting after them. The first one that we have is the Patrick Ta Major Headlines, Major Beauty Headlines Matte Suede Lipstick. And this one specifically, I have two of them in my cart, which would be $84 on two lipsticks. So that's why it's in this video. Um, the first one is in the color She's Hard to Get. Looks a little bit reminiscent of the color that I have on today. The color that I'm currently wearing is the ColourPop Luxe Lipstick in the shade Maxed Out. One of my favorite bright, bright fuchsias. I just feel really like pretty and fun in this color. So that lipstick in She's Hard to Get. And then I also really want the shade Oh She's Single. They are very opaque, very creamy, but super matte, which is what I like in a more bold lip color. Same thing with this ColourPop lip. It is a matte formula and it is super opaque, super pigmented. You can put a gloss with it if you want to. With a bold color like this, I'm not a fan of a gloss on top. I wouldn't really ever do that. With the nude lipstick, I would do like a clear gloss or a nude gloss or whatever. So I like having a matte lip because you can customize it from there. I've seen so many people haul them and use them in videos and I'm so envious, but I just... I can't justify spending that much on lip product right now as well because we're wearing masks and I'm not really showing my lips on the day to day when I'm out so I don't know I feel weird about buying or spending at least that much money on lip stuff right now but I have my eye on them they will be mine at some point next up I have my first fragrance of the group I have two fragrances in here um both of them like the full sizes because why not if I could so the first fragrance that I have is the Jo Malone London fragrance in Peony Blush and Suede. And I have the 100 milliliter in my cart, which retails for $184 Canadian. So pricey, so bougie. Um, my Sephora location that I work at has recently acquired a Jo Malone uh, section in the store. So I've had the opportunity to smell all pretty much of the Jo Malone fragrances and fallen in love with many of them um, when I was living in England and visiting England before I was living there for school with my mom we went to our first standalone Jo Malone store in Bath England and it was just gorgeous and we had such a lovely experience in that store it was just like a great day and I wish I had bought a little fragrance that day to memorize commemorate that but I didn't because I was poor which I still am um, but it just like means a lot to me thinking about it. I remember I smelled this one and it was my favorite that day and I've been thinking about it ever since. It smells more like grown up and pretty than my other fragrances. The other ones I have are much more like candy sweet and like warm vanilla sweet. That's just my style, but this one's a little more grown up, a little more mature, and it smells really, really lovely and girly and I feel... Like, I would feel like a million bucks wearing it. So even the mini would be good to get, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But if I could, in an ideal world, I would purchase the 100 milliliters, especially because it looks nicer on your counter wherever you display your perfumes. Jumping back into makeup, we have a foundation. The only foundation of this grouping, which is kind of surprising for me. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. The shade 1.5 is the one that would work for me. I've swatched it in store so many times. I know this shade is what I would want um, and what would work for my skin tone. So this guy is 30 milliliters standard one fluid ounce and it retails for $80 Canadian so 
she's pricey. Um, I've heard just honestly nothing but good things about this foundation. If I did one day purchase it and ended up not loving it, I know I could always return it, but it's just that initial purchase that I just can't justify on a foundation, but I know one day I will end up getting it. Probably everything in this cart one day I will acquire because I've just been lusting after these products for so so long. I've heard it's a gorgeous sheer buildable coverage skin like. I just have a lot of foundations that I've fallen in love with in the last few months though. Like there's so many foundations that I currently really do love in my collection so it's not something that I purchase over a lot of the other things in my cart at the moment just because I don't feel a great need for it. If I could and I had the money, I would 100% love to try it out and have it in my collection. Next up, we have a Charlotte Tilbury product, and this is her Cheek to Chic Blush in Love Glow. This retails for $50. I have technically owned this twice. I purchased it first when I was living in England, loved it, wore it like every single day for like five months straight, brought it home, broke it, shattered it into a million pieces, and just threw it out. And then I repurchased it a few months ago and they sent me the wrong shade. So I've tried to own it twice and it hasn't worked out. It's a gorgeous shade. It's honestly my perfect blush shade, like my dream blush shade. If I could create my own, it would be this. It's just so pretty and what I want in a blush. Pinky, blue tone pink with a little bit of luminosity. It makes your skin look flawless and blushed and flushed. I just, it's everything I would want in a blush. So would love to purchase that and will repurchase it one day. We'll see when that will be. Um, next we have a primer. Surprise, surprise, I love my primers. This is another product that I do own and have owned. Actually, so is the next one. So this is the Lila Be A Glow Priming Oil. I have the big one in my cart. This is one ounce, 30 milliliters, so like your classic foundation amount, and it costs $90 which is just really absurd, but it's kind of worth it. I have had the mini of this product and I went through it in honestly like a two month period, which is very quick for me for makeup, especially for something like primer because I love so many and I like to switch it up, but I just absolutely adore this primer on my skin. It is an oily, glowy, dewy gorgeousness so I can justify the price on this one because I know that it works for me and I love it so much. It's clean at Sephora. I would love to try more from the Lila B line in general. Um, their lip oils look really gorgeous as well. But yeah, this Be A Glow Priming Oil is just like very special. It does great things for your skin under foundation. It's gorgeous. I'm also wearing that today but you won't be able to see the effects of a primer really once all your makeup is on. It's just something that you like personally notice. Next up we have my second and last fragrance of the bunch. This is Victor and Rolf's Flower Balm, specifically Nectar. I love regular Flower Balm. It's such a good classic girly sweet type scent. I don't know. I'm awful at describing scents but Nectar is my favorite variation of Flower Bomb. I like it more than the original Flower Bomb. I had never sprayed it until I started working at Sephora and then like I smell a lot of fragrances because I sample them for people and stuff. So I smelled Flower Bomb Nectar and I just absolutely became in love with it. I did purchase a roller ball, well not a roller ball, it was a little travel size spray um, around Christmas time, like December, January, and I used it up and I absolutely loved it. So I have purchased this before, used it, know I love it, but I would love to purchase the full size. The 50 milliliter perfume spray and this is 156. So fairly pricey, not too much more expensive than the Jo Malone though, and you get double in the Jo Malone. Something to think about. Okay, I just know I love that fragrance and the bottle is really pretty as well. So we have a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. Um, the only lipstick that I've ever tried from her is the classic Pillow Talk lipstick and I absolutely adore it. Love it so much. It's so worth it. I have the liner and the lipstick duo and I love both. They're great. So the one that I have in my cart is part of her Hot Lips 2 collection. 
and this is in the shade Dance Floor Princess. I have been eyeing this lipstick for over a year now. I have almost purchased it on two different locations. I've swatched it on two different occasions. I've swatched it so many times and like I know I love the color and I love the packaging. If I could, I would love to own all of Charlotte Tilbury's lipsticks. Um, this does retail for $43, so super similar in pricing to the Patrick Ta as well. Those ones are $42. Really want that, but again, right now can't really justify lip products with everything going on but I'll have that lipstick eventually. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. Next up, we have another Patrick Ta product. This is the Major Glow Dewy Milk Mist. This is $50 and you get 50 milliliters. I have read the ingredients on this and I've compared it to the ingredients on tons of other dewy glow sprays on the market and then from Sephora as well. And the ingredients just seem better and more up my alley than most of these setting sprays. I'll read some of them to you, the ones that stood out to me. And it has really good reviews so far. So it has rosehip oil, it has black tea ferment, it has witch hazel extract. It doesn't have alcohol at the top of the list. It has glycerin and water up there rather than alcohol. I love setting sprays. I love a dewy setting spray. I've actually been trying out... Um, two different ones lately. I'm wearing them today in combination and I love the way they make my skin look. I kind of fell out of love with setting sprays and just wasn't using them at all for a while and I'm fully back into it and it makes such a difference, especially if you're someone with dry skin and you want a more dewy luminous finish um, and you, even when you're not wearing highlight like you still want to be glowy and healthy looking. I definitely have my eye on that one. All right next up I have my last product from Patrick Ta. This is his Major Beauty Headlines Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duo. Specifically I want the Pinky Duo. Again no surprise I am eyeing the shade that or the shade, the duo, and She's That Girl retails for $45 and you get 0.37 ounces of product. You get a powder blush and a cream blush. I loved the look of his first blush release, the powders that came out around December of last year, and I ended up passing on those when I saw them in person. They just weren't exactly what I like in a blush, um, but then I saw this launch and this is exactly what I like in a blush, and I love that you get a powder and cream because honestly lately in my routine I've been using both almost equally. I love powder blushes and I love cream blushes so I'd love to try his formula. Again the packaging is luxe. It's pretty. It's gorgeous so definitely wanting that guy. And the last makeup one is the Marc Jacobs Beauty Omega Bronzer Coconut Perfect Tan in the shade 102 Tan Trick. This is 0.8 ounces and it retails for $65 Canadian. You get a ton of product, like an obscene amount of product for a bronzer, um, so the price is justifiable in that sense. I've just always wanted to try this bronzer. It's one that everyone on YouTube has owned, I swear, and talked about it. I have a lot of bronzers that I like and bronzer isn't a makeup item that is as exciting to purchase for me personally. I get more excited about blush, obviously, and I get more excited about highlighter than I do bronzer. That's the last makeup product. And then the very last and most expensive product of this whole little grouping is a hair tool. This is the Amika Hair Blow Dryer Brush. This is a newer product to Amika and Sephora in general. It launched last week or two weeks ago, I believe, and I've been really eyeing it. It retails for $130. Did I already say that? I don't remember. It looks very similar to the Revlon brush. I have tried that one. I have loved that one, and it broke on me. I've had my eye on this. I also would like to try their hair waver, like the crimper tool. I think that is a super cute hairstyle that's making a comeback, and I'm into it, but yeah. The hair blow dryer brush is definitely higher on my list than some of the other stuff, especially because I do have so much makeup and I know it's not something that I need to purchase a lot of the things on this list. None of them are needs, but if there is a need on the list, 
it would be the hair dryer blow dryer brush because I don't currently own anything like that. That is everything on my list for the thousand dollar fantasy Sephora basket. If you liked this video definitely be sure to like it, give it a thumbs up, let me know that you like seeing videos like this. It really does help me out when I'm planning my content for you guys. As well please do be sure to subscribe if you aren't already and if you don't already be sure to turn on your notifications so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video because YouTube isn't the greatest at doing that. That is everything that I have for you guys and as always I hope that you have an absolutely awesome day and thank you so so much for watching. Bye!